Good afternoon and welcome to the Baroque on Beaver Island Music Festival 2020, which this year we're calling Baroque on Beaver Reimagined. I'm Robert Nordling, music director of the festival, and we are thrilled to welcome you here for this final event of this year's festival. Um, hope you've had a chance to watch some of the performances over this past week. Um, many of them are still available and uh, uh, available for you to view and sign on to YouTube. You sign on to YouTube, Baroque on Beaver, subscribe to that, uh, and then you'll be able to see all the various videos that are still posted. Enjoy them. They're wonderful performances and conversations this year. Also, one final time, please, one final ask, would you please consider making a contribution to support this festival? Uh, this year, more than ever, we really depend on your gifts um, to pay for this festival, as we're not charging ticket prices or anything at all to view these, yet they are still expensive to pay for artists, to pay for the technology, to produce these videos. So if you would be generous, we would appreciate it. BaroqueOnBeaver.org, click on Donate. Uh, and we will we will thank you in advance for that generosity. Now, today, final day of the 2020 festival, and we're we're going to have a discussion with several of our own artists. These are artists that you see on stage when you come to the Baroque on Beaver Festival. Um, we're going to hear how um, musical life, performing life, making music has been um, particularly challenging in this time. Um, what they're doing to get along in this in this time of the pandemic, what they're doing to survive, and maybe get some ideas about, some creative ideas about the future, looking ahead. Um, so it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Andrea Yun. Andrea, hello. Hi. Uh, Dilek Engin. Unmute yourself, Delek. Hello. <laughs> and Hello. There you are. Mesrak Ramli. Apakabar. Apakabar. <laughs> baik, baik. <laughs> uh, and uh, Joe Radke. Hello. How are you doing, Joe? Good. I'm doing great. Great, great to see you. Guys. Now, the, the only problem I have here, you guys, is that you are all entirely in the wrong place in my in my eyes. Andrew, you should be down over to my right, and Joe, you should be out in the back. So, so, yeah, so <laughs> where you normally sit in the orchestra, I'm 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 getting a little bit a little bit messed up here. But I think we agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for you guys, anything that gets the conductor out of the center of the, is a good thing. Is a, is a step in the right direction. So, so happy to happy to oblige. Hey, listen, let's just take a minute and go, maybe go around our circle and just uh, uh, tell us, re remind us your instrument, maybe you know your length of time you've been at Beaver Island, and what your 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 regular gig or your regular gigs. Uh, have been here too for you know whether you have a teaching position or a or an orchestra position um it, just just give us a brief overview of of of, uh, of introduction andrea can we start with you sure i am a cellist in ann arbor michigan i've been playing on broke on beaver i think if this would have been my eighth year maybe seventh something like that um and normally i play with the michigan opera theater i teach and I do a lot of teacher training, so I I, I, te I travel around the country to do Suzuki teacher training. Fantastic. Uh, Dilek, how about you? Um, I This is my sixth year, Baroque on Beaver Island since 2014, actually. Mm. Uh, I'm teaching at Flint Institute of Music since 2018, and I got a new position just this summer, which is very unusual where we are at right now in the world. And uh, that's a string chair department at F SPA. Congratulations. Well Thank done. You. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and also I teach at uh, College of Music at MSU during the summer. But this summer, um, so far, we know nobody enroll for right. any violin on viola 
okay. classes, anything like that. So, and I have my own studio in East Lansing. And I'm also teaching uh, Lansing Catholic High School. Wow. So it's been quite a bit, a lot of things has been going on and lifting out. So here we are. Very good. Very good. Well, we're, we're going to dig into detail in some of those in just in, in just a minute. But uh, uh, Mesrak, how about you? Hi. Um, this is my third year uh, playing on Baroque and Bieber. Uh, I play the oboe and English horn. Um, I live in Leland, Michigan currently. Uh, I was originally from Singapore. And um, my current position, I teach uh, oboe at Northwestern Michigan College, Saginaw Valley State University, and also a private studio where I have kids ranging from middle school age to retired school teachers. So that's what uh, I do right now. Fantastic. Fantastic. And Joe? Oh, I'm Joe, and I play trombone, and I've been on the island, I think this would have been my ninth or tenth year, or ninth probably, I can't remember. Um, I teach band in Greenville. I actually just moved positions, and this was my first year there, and uh, it was kind of crazy to have to switch jobs after 14 years of teaching and, and get wow. sent home early. Um, but I teach middle school band and high school jazz band. Um, I play in two regional orchestras, and uh, sometimes I teach at Elma College. But it's it's just been a, a crazy time to experience all this music stuff and not be able to do anything. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Now it's interesting um, f for us. I mean, in, in hearing each of you talk, all of you have multiple things that make up make up your career, make up our, our careers. We have you know multiple pieces of it. And you folks listening in, um, hear that. Hear that um, most musicians have multiple positions or multiple different streams of income that make up you know, a career, sometimes very, very different aspects of the music life as well. Well, let's, let's dig in a little bit here. Um, Andrea, maybe to you first. I know you're a regular performer you, you know, in, in, in the opera company. You've done a bunch of solo work. Um, but as a studio teacher, now, what has that what has that been like over the over these past over these past few months what is it do you do are you doing online are you doing distance i mean what's been your teaching life like uh for a lot of people it's been kind of uncomfortable because everything's online um i really like computers so i like it actually i feel like i'm as effective if not more effective as an online teacher quite honest i mean of course it's better to be in person because you get that connection but there are some things that i do with my students that i never did before online like, like what? i can link link things to web pages and uh -huh. you know whereas before i i could have just had my computer out and shown them in lessons but i never did that so now that i have zoom i can just say oh there's this recording by jacqueline dupre or oh if you want to see the science of how a string actually vibrates let's look at this youtube video or let's cool. you know there's all sorts of things that are at our fingertips that i never really did before so i'm all online and i know some of my colleagues are doing some lessons in person but um with the heat and bugs and allergies i just and and the online is actually going quite well for me so i don't hmm. i don't really mind it so i am i'm all online for teaching my students right now we were talking with Martha Guth the other night and her teaching, and and she was saying that one of the advantages of online and community teaching is how close, when you have a camera, either on a hand that's doing or on a voice, you can examine the mechanism very, in, you know, very, very closely in great detail and see things that maybe you can't even see from several feet away. I, has that been an aspect? Yeah, what I really like about Zoom is now I stand I stand to teach I have a strap that I could strap on my cello and so I can get my hand this close to the camera where you know normally I wouldn't put my hand in their face that right so, right right so there's actually a lot of that and, and you know doing things in person I find that being online and being this close with someone is better than being 20 feet apart with masks on and not and want to be close and not be able to be so I find there is once you get past the fact that it's a computer and it's not a real human being, which is a big deal, but once you get past that, actually there's kind of an, an intimacy that's involved in the mm. online experience that 
kind of isn't there. I mean, there is a there is a human aspect that I I've met with a couple of my students, especially my nephews, for lessons, and it's great once we see each other. It's so nice. But then when we get once we're done with the social part and the human right. part, and we just get to lessons, actually the the lesson part of things is quite effective on Zoom after that. That's encouraging. Now, Joe, you, you're teaching as well. Um, and you mentioned teaching band, right? Yeah. And teaching mm -hmm. in the, in the public schools. What is it, what is it like, what has it been like for you uh, doing ensembles and, and what is the year coming up look like? Well, when we, when we went home in March, uh, I went to pretty much teaching my students, uh, virtually and lessons like Andrea. And I also found similar results as she did. I found that it was a little bit more personal because right. um, they could keep logging in and, and watch things over and over again. And to add to what she said, they can also see what they're doing, which they can't always see when you're live, which is, which is very, and here, even more important, hear what they're doing. Um, so I found that to be kind of rewarding too. Um, it is hard though, because you can't, you can't see them when they're not online. So as far as right. teaching goes, it was really hard. Even doing a meeting like this with a, a band full of middle schoolers was really, really interesting. I saw lots of pets and, but you never <laughs> know if they're even listening. You know, they could, they could be in a different room sometimes. You don't even know. Sure. So, so it, you, had, you had many students all together online or you did one at a time? Um, I did like each class um, to start off with, you know, every, once a week I had a class we would meet and we would just talk about how things were going that week, maybe do a concept. Okay. Um, really a lot of the learning in the, in the fall was, or in the spring was about making sure the kids were okay and wow. keep making sure they were checked in. Um, but I, we did a lot. I mean, I probably, I probably did hundreds of hours of videos. <laughs> so I really, come to know how to make videos and, and how to wow. uh, interact with students online. Going mm -hmm. forward, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, please. Going forward, it, it's um, been kind of stressful because you know I'm thinking about how do I start um, beginners if we're not meeting face-to-face. -face. So some of that is you literally have to walk up and put their hands on the instrument or show them where it's supposed to go. Um, it's just really a, a difficult thing. So I've been trying to prepare for that because it's very likely that will be virtual at least for a little while when okay. school starts. Um, that the word hasn't completely officially come down yet. But uh, and then there's so many things to think about when we are together, um, trying to socially distance and wear masks. It, it, it's not going to look like music like we are all craving. Um, mm -hmm. The kids need social, but. This is this is a crazy time to be a teacher. It's very stressful. Yeah. And a honestly. crazy time to introduce, like you say, to introduce beginners into the world of music. You want to tell them it's not usually like this. You know, it's yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be different. Yeah. Um, and and think like my seventh graders that were sixth graders last year, ha some of them probably haven't played an instrument since March. <laughs> so uh, thinking uh, they're gonna come back and be seventh graders and and we'll have to start somewhere in the middle of you know, wow. what they would have been in sixth grade. So yeah, there's a bunch of catch up. Yeah. Mesrak, how about you? Now you've got, you've got obviously a studio, but you've also got the Leland Musical Arts Celebration as an organization. Yes. I mean, uh, tell us a little bit about that and maybe how that whole scene has been impacted too. Sure. Um, I started the Leland Musical Arts Celebration back in 2015. Um, uh, part of my background in school board, uh, was arts administration, music administration. And through those classes, uh, what was instilled to me was if there are not many opportunities for you out there, you have to make opportunities for yourself. You know, find different places or different avenues to play, to perform. So that was the idea of uh, the, the main idea of Leland Musical Art Celebration. So it's mm. basically a chamber music series, uh, a week of chamber music series right here in Leland. And um, not only is it just music, it also incorporates other different kinds of arts like uh, visual arts and mm. um, poetry that we include into the uh, performances. So that is uh, for most of the audience, for a lot of the audience, in fact, they think they see it as a holistic art experience. It's right. not just music, it's visual. It's, it's just 
uh, engaging all of their senses. Mm -hmm. So um, with, you know, ever since this pandemic, it, it has been very difficult, uh, um, you know, to just do anything of that nature where the audience is up close and personal with you, just watching you breathe and play. Right. Um, however, uh, we uh, actually just did, we collaborated with the art gallery here in town. And what we've done is, uh, I actually did an outdoor concert uh, just last month. Bravo. Um, and we had, uh, it was socially distanced. It was out uh, on the lawn at the old art building here in Dillon. And we had about over, uh, almost up to a hundred people. Really? Just out, uh, distance, yes, with mask and everything. Um, and so that's what we did. And so with the collaboration with the art gallery here, um, we actually recorded our repertoire. We did a professional recording. It was sponsored by them. And so uh, each piece will be uploaded onto social media of the old art building and the art gallery, a piece every week, just to keep the arts alive, just to keep it exactly. going, you know, exactly in, in these current times to let people know that, hey, just because this pandemic is here, it doesn't mean that we're not here. We're still here. We're still doing what we love and we, we're still pre presenting to you um, what what we do, what we love to do. So that's that has been what we've done here. Just going online, just trying to keep it going and just do what we do. Wow. Yeah. And, and, when, and when, when you talk about multiple expressions of art, I guess adding video online, that's another avenue to find a way to, to express our artwork too, I suppose. Yes. So what we, uh, there are a lot of art pieces in the art gallery here. So we pair the different uh, music to the different art pieces that the other artists do. So in, it's not just us, we also include those visual artists in the project. So wow. it's been kind of just encompassing and it's, it's a really nice feeling to be able to do that and include other artists as well, not just musicians, but visual artists. Brilliant, brilliant. Dilek, how about you? Um, uh, you mentioned you're teaching at the Flint School and uh, also at Michigan State, where there may or may not be students present. What's 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 the current situation been like for you? So far, so good. Uh, most of the students and families they are very okay. happy for the online. As much as we have negativeness or the positiveness, we have the traveling situation. They are pretty happy, not going anywhere. You know, we can do our lessons wherever they are at. We've been having lessons really? like they're at parking lots or the garage. They love playing outside, some of the students. Not other hand, some of the families are not feeling comfortable. Maybe they don't have right. quick internet situation. You know, maybe they don't have any computer yeah, yeah, yeah. or iPad, anything like that. Phones doesn't work well. So it's like kind of on and off. But when we got in the couple of weeks after the pandemic start, okay. I think we got on track. And right now it's coming to the situation like they mm. would like to do face to face, but we are waiting for the um, sure, government for the green to light. say. Yeah. Wow. Right. And um, so we'll see about that. And then on the other hand, actually, it's I'm writing them some notes, like emailing them. It's so easy for them to communicate that way. Uh. And I'm recording chunk by chunks after their lesson. For example, mm -hmm. if I need to show something, I just go to you know closer to get screen, turn this way, turn this way, any angle, or show my fingers. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. As we talk about it, so uh, actually a lot, a lot of good improvements. It's so interesting when they are their own, mostly. Uh, they can figure it out, some of the things musician figures out by ourselves. Sure, sure. So in that aspect, it was awesome. But missing, as a performer side, missing the audience, that adrenaline, right. that like energy, 
and being together with musician hey i hear you let's play together so we are i think breaking my heart but we miss i'm pretty sure we all miss that yeah, let, yeah, let's let's talk about that because you know most of you referenced um, uh, teaching and the challenges of teaching, which is a huge part of what of, of what's of what you do and what's been going on. What about performing? Um, what has been each of your experience with finding creative ways to do your own performing? Now, are you making videos? Are you standing out in the park and playing by yourself? Are you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's been your experience about about actually doing and preparing performances, if any? Anybody? Well, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I took the opportunity to learn new things that I haven't been working on. So, like, I've been I took an online composition course. I learned how to use a digital audio workstation and and do okay. recording and multi track and and um, and all of that that kind of stuff. Um, because I mean, there's nobody to play with, so why not, why not do it by myself? <laughs> you also find out that the, you know, that there's things that you do <laughs> when you multi-track that you wish you didn't do. And uh, that was kind of a yeah. learning experience as well. <laughs> um, but it is, it's actually in that it's been kind of the silver lining in this for me. Um, cause I've never in my life since I, I'm probably high school had this much time to, to experiment and do you know, in, in research and practice and all of that. Wow. So, wow. You know, I, I, um, I didn't have the bandwidth in this to play cello for many months, actually. I didn't like play zero. And when I did, I was like, wow, oh, thank goodness I'm still a little bit in shape. You know, now that I'm kind of pulling out of whatever mindset was happening in the beginning, you know, my, my creativity in the beginning went into like mask making and drawing with my daughter and that creativity actually I you know I kind of downplay my need for creativity even though I'm a musician <laughs> but uh, I, it was really stark that what that I needed the creative side but it was really just interesting that I didn't need the cello I just I use it in other ways but now, now that I'm in a different stage of this pandemic for me so I've I'm this closet jazzer I just have always wanted to play jazz music and that's wow. all I want to do and if I could give up my classical gig and just be a jazz musician like I pick up the saxophone and do it so I've been taking online jazz things and my improv has gone off it's like so much wow. better than it was and so i'm just playing with iro pro and like online basically online band you know like box band stuff and and just playing with it so you know it's that not having the collaboration with my friends is more hard you know i did i am trying to put together a recording of things but you know putting even putting things together it's it's difficult but yep. find that putting together recordings with friends remotely even i i still feel somewhat of a connection there too so that's that's really a nice outlet as well. I've been driving my family crazy <laughs> practicing jazz too, because I've been learning like one tune in every key. So like day that. after day after day, <laughs> I know <laughs> everybody's singing it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm composing stuff as well, my wife finally just, you know, leaves the room after a while. <laughs> How many times can it be rearranged? Oh my gosh. Doesn't feel like that many to me. No, it does. <laughs> it's new every time when I play it. I don't know. <laughs> gosh. Actually, three weeks ago, um, Flint Symphony Orchestra and then uh, FSPA faculty meeting, we have summer performances, chamber music. Yep. And this year they decided to do outdoor on Mondays. So we started three weeks ago and we went to um, retirement houses and um, we went to nursing houses. You outdoor. physically went to them? Yes. But however, we didn't go to the inside of the building. We are outside. What oh, happened? Oh, I see. Set I up a plan in front of the bank. What a great idea. Yes. Hotel, you know, outdoor is, I mentioned the outdoor. So they put a tent and everybody with the mask in their space. Not many people plays together. For example, me and my husband play. Sure. 
right? So I played some solo pieces on the violin, on the viola. He played on the some solo pieces, bass drum on, mm. and we played duo together. So it's like around 20 minutes, 30 minutes ish. Some people play solo, you know. So wow. that's been, it's been going on so far, and it's really a little bit less formal, but it's very casual. It's like you play go to weddings, gigs, or events. Right. And but also being difficult playing outside too. But we'll take that. We'll take that playing outdoor. It's okay. Absolutely. In that time. So. Hmm. So far, we did that. And for the another summer festival, we play um, TFO. We did recordings. Right. Bunch yeah. of recordings. And then it's very difficult putting the headphone, listening another recording, and be able to adjust. And I can't even imagine those uh, people who works at the sound check situation. You know, if you are talking about Robert and Joe and then Andre is like, measure up too it's like so difficult how am i gonna line up together who comes right. who comes first like yeah it's very a lot of work yeah outside of playing actually so yeah and then on the other hand like at least saying each other how are you how have you been doing right you know right. that's really important i think support each other i think as much as we have Yes, performance, very important, and teaching, very important, art, dancing. I told my student, I said, go listen to the minuet, one, dance it. <laughs> Tell me what you do. They have to do something fun as well, as much as they are human beings. Right. So somehow, like parents calls me out of nowhere, they stop less, you know, they stop taking lessons online after March, apparently, but they said, how are you doing? Like, wow. month later. It's like absolutely amazing how people can get together and click from wow. one side of the world to the other side of the world. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, I mean, what I've heard from, 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 from all of you guys is the need to be light on your feet, to be creative, to be willing to do something different. Um, or to do what we do differently. Um, you know, I, I don't hear it as much now, but for a while you heard about when we go back to normal, or then it was when the new normal comes. Now people aren't saying that very much anymore. But think about, or let me get your thoughts about, there's a whole bunch of stuff we're doing now. Andrea, you talked about ways that you're using video to teach you know ways that are ways that you're using it to do band or ways that you're you know using new tools now some of them obviously when things open up and when we go back to face-to-face -face performance we'll leave behind but some of them are not what do you see as things skills technologies tools that we're learning now that we're going to bring forward into the music world as we look ahead you know uh i don't think i don't think i'll ever teach the same way again i think so. this this has changed the way that i think about teaching um now now that the students are kind of in on board with being able to go online there are so many resources we can use when we're teaching the same as performing i think performers are the same way you know like now that we're kind of getting used to doing this self-promotion sort of situation okay. Okay. and put put out content on our own and not wait for someone else to to show us i think that uh those are really big advantages for teaching and performing mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't doing that before i you know i was teaching the traditional way i would go in listen to the students give them feedback live but i was kind of ignoring this giant world that you know if they want to see uh, a whole great trombone section play, they can go on and, and, and listen to that and, you know, comment on it and compare themselves to it and, and all of that where, you know, we weren't doing that before. And, you know, hmm. theory and all that content that's already out there and created, 
um, is easier to access now, I think, than ever before because of this. So I don't think I'll ever teach the same way again. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I'll teach the same way again either. I think also that, you know, th this has made the world smaller, that I can reach out to my favorite jazz cello pedagogue and just be like, hey, you want to give me lessons? And he says yes, because he's kind of in need of work, <laughs> I'm sure. But I think that that, you know, there are major, even in the cello world, like really serious cello teachers, artist teachers, people that if I were even in the same room with them, that it would be an honor. Right. <laughs> but that they're teaching in these camps and they're reaching out and they've got online content. It's forced every generation to come to terms with the 21st century mm -hmm. and computers and video usage and accessibility. And it's just amazing. You know, it, it makes me wonder about accessibility of video for, you know, underserviced populations and things right. like that. And it, I think it ignites a whole new level of accessibility issues. But at the same time, I do think for those people who do have the internet connection, it's like, I think the door is open and I don't think it's, it's going to come closed again a little bit when we go back to doing more things in person. But I do think that that door is open and I think it's going to stay wide, which is really exciting. I also think uh, when you look at what we're doing right now, everybody has a front seat. You know, I'm a trombone right. player. I sit five rows back, 100 yards away from anything. And right now I'm sitting as close as everybody else and I can hear and I have to participate. Sure. I can, you know, um, those students in your class that or that you're teaching that don't participate and uh, they sit back and they're quiet. Now they have a voice and they're they're close up. So and I love the chat box. So these quiet students yeah. can chat yeah. and you know, and then they're saying the students I've never heard from before are like hilarious when they chat. It's, <laughs> it's really cool. It's, it's another voice, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Delek Mesrak, how about you? What are you going to be bringing forward? new things that you've learned now that, that you may apply to uh, your performing or the art world going forward? I was just going to say that, you know, um, technology, I mean, having to implement technology into my teaching uh, has definitely made me think of different ways uh, and also in performing different ways to do things. However, um, I do have to say as an oboist, um, you know, when it comes to one of the biggest challenge that I have is um, teaching read making to students mm. because it is such a hands on approach. It is not something that is scientific, you know, it's not something that you have certain calculations that you do and voila, your read works. It's, you know, you're dealing with a plant, you're dealing with something that's organic. Every piece of cane is going to be different. And the way I alone have, very sharp knives. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and there's techniques to sharpening the knives. And I have, you know, for me, my experience with learning read making uh, with my teachers, uh, I learned so much and I learned the best when I was sitting right next to my teacher, just watching her scrape that read and her teaching me, telling me like, oh, you're angling your knife uh, incorrectly or your knife needs to be sharpened with how many number of strokes on the sharpening stone. Wow. And, you know, just to be able to teach read making online. I mean, if, in order for me to see what my student is doing, I mean, it's difficult for them to angle their computer uh, camera or you know their phone uh, and I've I actually took a lesson with um, a regular uh, substitute English home player with the New York Philharmonic she actually had like an overhead camera really? to show you what she was doing yeah exactly but I didn't have that and I don't imagine my students investing um, you know my high school students investing in that to just learn read making so I think that is something that I have still have to think about on how okay. to do it the best or you know or i'll just have to wait till things get better and we can get together again and learn how to make reads because it's right. a totally different art form from just playing the oboe so right. yeah those that's a challenge or something that i'm still trying to figure out how to do right right very interesting one of the performances we did this week um uh almost all the performances were done fairly low tech. Somebody had a telephone and they recorded themselves playing and they sent that in or maybe a camera. But one guy, when Michael Hall did his recital, he had three telephones <laughs> uh, and did them 
at different angles simultaneously so he would have three camera angles. But again, it was fairly low tech. But then he sent those three off to, to our video producer who then cut and pasted and it looked mm -hmm. like there were three different camera angles. But again, using what he had on hand. Mm -hmm. I think he may have had one camera and then two phones, one right over his head, like you said, Mesrek, looking down mm -hmm. and then one. So like, having to be creative about, uh, about the performing, performing environment. Mm -hmm. So. Also, when I started, I remember, so everybody not using Zoom or Skype or WhatsApp or FaceTime. I literally had to write it on my calendar, on my phone. Who goes which electronic uh. program, you know? <laughs> okay. Da, 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 per, goes to Zoom. <laughs> so, so I wow. like, uh, computer is here. My computer wasn't working, and then I got from FIM. Yeah, so luckily FIM just gave us. It was very supportive as well as I say. You know, everybody supports each other. It's amazing, and um, gave us computers. And then also I had like phone here, computer here, iPad here. There is like um, another computer there. And we had to get like microphones mm. or be able to hear each other because this is the big issue. I'm pretty sure um, be able to hear tone quality, sound, and so far so good. If you have a great, you know, phone and you know, microphones and headphones or the uh, the speakers works, it sounds great. And then somehow recording situation works very well. Right. So right. far. But um, yeah, it's so interesting, like jumping one to another program. Oh my god, I have to get to this. Oh my god, I have to get to that. Well, uh, would you please call? <laughs> like, yeah. Like yeah. You know, I, I, I think it, it, it has become a tech dependent time, <laughs> right? Uh, we were. were the only way all of these things work is if the technology works, if you have a decent Wi-Fi signal. Um, yeah. And the tech has become so good in many, in many ways that it, it, it can be invisible with what you want. You want the tech to be invisible. But on the other hand, without sort of a universal platform, for example, like, the, like you were saying, you had to have all, all kinds of different, different platforms to use. And it can be a lot trickier than people think. You know, these orchestral ensembles that put together what I call the Brady Bunch, you know, performances where everybody has a square and they're playing to a click track and they put it all together. It looks, you know, pretty simple, straight forward. It is not. It is highly complicated and very, very difficult to make those things seem seem so natural. I mean, I, have any of you been, make, been making those, you know, multiple players I, the Hollywood squares look. I have a friend that's been doing um, his live piano bar in his basement. And so I started to record horn tracks for him. Okay. So he would send me a demo track and then I would record with video those, you know, the parts. And it, and it, it is really hard. You know, a three minute song might take me all day. And with easy like R and B sort of horn licks, even <laughs> so, um, and it's but it's fun and it's really rewarding. Yeah, I'm putting together an orchestral lead with Robert and Martha Goose and some friends, and uh, it's been really great. But then you know it's it's orchestral, so there's a lot of video, and my computer just I was can't like, take it. it's too much. <laughs> I <laughs> So, you know, even I, I, I ended up getting a new computer. My computer actually died for other reasons. But, um, you know, it's just the amount of putting everyone together. What I didn't realize is how much we really aren't exactly together. But it comes out in this beautiful whole. And as I would put two people together and three people together, I'd be like, oh, it's not really lined up. But then the more people I would put into the mix, I was like, oh, it doesn't line up, which I knew. But when you've got it on a computer, it's so tempting to want to make it 
perfect. Perfect. You know, make yeah. line up. But actually, if it was two together, it would right. sound a little bit. It sounds a little nicer when there's a little bit of of that yeah, human sure. element in it. And so I'm learning a lot about what precision really is and what beauty really is. It's it's really mm. fascinating. I agree with that. Wow. Wow. Nothing can take the live music away. No, it can't. It. it can't. And <laughs> and. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, that part of it is is probably irreplaceable. Uh, that that the human experience of presence and how commun only presence can create a certain aspect of community. I mean, we're having a conversation now, and we're we're able to see each other and respond to each other and share ideas. It would, in fact, be a different experience if we were sitting in the same room, actually speaking speaking with each other and and sharing with each other um yeah. so I, well my teachers always said uh, and i still hold this true to today that the best way to learn is uh music uh to ex is to experience it live right yeah, you know in, in person i think that's the only um that's when people can really feel the magic and you know the, the just feel the music yeah i completely agree with you there is no replacement there is no replacement for that so in our last couple of minutes, and let's go with that idea, Mesrak. Um, we're, you know, there's a bunch of people watching our conversation right now. And again, folks, thank you for joining us for this. Um, anything you guys would like to say to our Beaver Island audience? I mean, you know, these guys are missing out as well. They're they're they make the trek to the island each year and they get their tickets and they sit real close and they want to talk with Delek after the concert and they want to compare notes with Joe and Andrea and Mesrak. I mean and they can't do that. So what what would you like to say to our faithful Beaver Island audience? I miss you. <laughs> yes, we do. Really I think the only I had a lot of summer stuff canceled. You know, everything's canceled. I travel all summer long. You know, I'm I'm home maybe for four days at a time. And uh, Beaver Island is the only I hope no one else is watching, but other than Beaver Island people. But Beaver Island is the only <laughs> it's like I just it's that it's that feeling that people can come up to us after a concert right. and that fourth that fourth wall is is not there, you I know. And it's so nice to have that connection with the audience. And you know, this is why I love playing music is to connect with people, not just to like show you how great I am. And then I go off into my own world. It's like, I want to hear how the music affects people and what questions people have. And if I can learn more about their lives too. And mm. I really miss that so much. Yep. The go? year, the year for me starts at Beaver Island. And the whole the whole year, I you know I look forward to it. From the day I leave to the day I get there, I just can't I can't wait to get back. Yeah. And uh, it has been such a big part of my life, and I really really miss it too. And I miss all of the musicians, and I miss the whitefish sandwich, and I miss the portobello <laughs> mushroom sandwich. Yes, portobello. I, <laughs> I I love food. Uh, <laughs> I miss the beach. Um, but most of all, I, I miss the, the concerts and and collaborating musically with people live. It's something that, you know, I'm really sad that hasn't been going on lately. And I can't wait to get started with that again. Because this this computer thing is great, but the live music is, is really needed for our souls and I think for audiences' souls too. Right. Yeah, I was just gonna say that you know we're all in this together, and um, we all want all of this to get better. And I think um, uh, we are going to figure things out, and things will get better from where it is right now. And I really cannot wait to get back on Beaver Island because it's such a a magical place that you know it's it's such a different environment, and and the audience, you know, it, it, they're they're so. Um, appreciative and they, yes. they love the music and we the musicians love doing it too so I think we will figure this out soon and hope to get back to um, being able to play for people in person like, quickly indeed like <laughs> this is ah. I always 
the entire year and who made this island thank you so much <laughs> This is I am living for. <laughs> you take it on your phone with you. Fantastic. Here. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at this beauty. It's magnificent. It's yes. Magnificent. That's coming into St. James Harbor on the ferry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much for making the island. Thank you yeah. so much for bringing the people, keeping the nature up. It's uh, can't wait for the next time to see you guys and hang in there we'll get through this we all are strong in the world uh, love you all and can't wait to chat you and see you how your year been going what you've done your grandchildren your kids or your dogs pets anything and you also work all those months to borrow on your island orchestra as well so we'll we'll come together again and that can't is a wait. perfect sign off thank you andrea yun delek engin mesrak ramli joe radke guys thank you very much for taking some time to talk stay safe stay creative come back please next year and folks you too stay safe and make sure you join us again uh when uh if for baroque on beaver 2021 some big plans um take care guys jumpa lagi bye bye thanks bye bye jumpa <laughs>